Welcome back. Let's turn now to a little bit more of 2020 politics, presidential election, which in any other time would probably be the top story on this show most nights. Well, today, the race for the White House could be getting a bit more crowded. Michigan Congressman Justin Amash, who left the Republican Party less than a year ago when he came out in support of President Trump's impeachment, now says he's exploring a run uh, for president on the Libertarian Party line. And he joins me now, Congressman Amash. It's good to virtually uh, see you in social distance with you. Let me simply start with the basic question. Why do you want to be president? Well, thanks for having me on, Chuck. I think Americans need honest, practical leadership. They need someone capable in the White House. And what they're getting right now from both Trump and Biden is the same old, same old. And on the Republican side, you have an increasingly nationalist party. On the Democratic side, you have a party that hasn't really reached out to a broader coalition of Americans. I think they're reaching out to the, the same people on the coast and not identifying with most Americans. And I think you need someone in there who's going to present an honest, practical approach to things, who's willing to trust the people, who respects our system of government, and we'll find a way to bring people mm -hmm. together through that system of government. We have a system that's designed to moderate things and to bring people together, and we don't use that system very well. Uh, yes, that is true, that the whole point of the system was to try to figure out a consensus even when consensus isn't there. But let me ask you this. You say you're exploring right now because you want to see if there's a path to victory. It, you're not, you're not, it, this isn't supposed to be seen by as some vanity project. So. What metrics are you looking for to prove your path to victory? Because, look, I, I think in this day and age, it's easy to get the name recognition. I, I could picture that. But in a pandemic, you're asking the country a lot by, by electing somebody from a party that has never run the country before. Yeah, well, the point is that parties aren't supposed to run the country. So we elect officials who are supposed to represent us. And the thing I'm going to do is represent the people. When you look at this pandemic, for example, you look at the type of relief that was offered by the two parties. It was the type of relief that went to people at the top and went to those who were most well connected. And those people who are most struggling are actually being left behind. So you need a different approach to governance. You need an approach that respects the people, that respects the process. And I believe that if I spend the next several months talking to the American people about my ideas, talking to the American mm -hmm. people about the kind of principles I would bring to the job and the kind of practical approach I would bring to the job, a lot of Americans are going to be excited about this. And they're going to be excited, especially during this time where there's a lot of uncertainty and they're looking for something to uh, so for someone to to operate differently, not for the same old system that we've had before. You know, it's interesting. Obviously, the, a pure libertarianism, you know, a, a small government approach. We are in a time where there is some demand for a big government answer. Maybe these are from the same people that claim sometimes they want a small government. I'm. How would you be using the levers of power? You talked about this issue of, of, the ba of, of the bailouts, and so far it's only seemed to help those with connections. There's some out there, one, an idea on the right and the, the le left, of the government picking up the tab of all payrolls for a period of time. What do you make of ideas like that? Is that too intrusive of the government, or is that in line with where your head is at? Well, we know the government's going to be involved in this process. There's no doubt about that. There's going to be federal government relief. So the question is how we structure that relief. And the way it was structured was the most big government way possible, which is to get a lot of people involved, a lot of bureaucracy involved, put the banks in the middle of it, get the Federal Reserve involved with, with big corporations, give the Secretary of the Treasury a lot of random power. These are exactly the kinds of things that make the system difficult to operate and actually hinder economic recovery. So if you want to have stability and, and recovery in the future, you have to give people the freedom to make decisions for themselves. You have to give businesses the freedom to make decisions, of course. Uh, but most importantly, you have to protect the individuals right now who are struggling. So what I would have done is offer direct cash payments to the people. Instead of what we're doing now, okay. I would have said, Take this money and give a universal monthly cash payment to the people during the course of this pandemic. And you could have Congress renew it every three months, for example. So it only lasts for three months and then it's renewed. This would have helped people immediately. They wouldn't have had to wait 
for unemployment to work out for them or for the PPP system to get up and running. And then on top of it, right. with this convoluted system Congress created, you have PPP cutting against the unemployment system, where the unemployment system is encouraging people not to work by enhancing it to the point where the benefits are more than the pay that they get from work. And then you're telling employers at the same time, please rehire these employees. And it's created a clash where, in some cases, employees aren't interested in coming back to work to a, a less safe environment when they could be at home and getting unemployment in the meantime. Of course, everyone in the long run wants to get back to work, but in the in the short run, you can see the, the problem. The philosophy of helping certain industries. Uh, on one hand, there's the your, your, your basic philosophy, hey, pure free market capitalism, hey, you're on your own. But this is a unique situation. Where are you on helping the casino industry, helping the airline industry, some of these that are right now sort of, they can't run their business? Well, if they can't run their business, then their biggest cost right now is that they've they've got some overhead and you can take care of their employees by offering direct payments. So what I would have said is, you guys limit your costs. Also, big corporations have more access to capital. They, they have better relationships with banks and, and other people who can provide them the, the loans in the meantime. But we can take care of a big portion of your costs by covering for your employees. So if these employees aren't getting benefits, aren't getting the same level of pay from your business, then we, the government, can pay them. Then, mm. in the meantime, the, uh, we have to get through this crisis. When the crisis is over, demand will come back, okay. and these, gov these companies can get back up and running. But I don't think we should have the government selecting which industries are most important, which ones are taxpayers mm -hmm. going to bail out. Let's help out the people right. and not bail out the corporations. All right, two sort of hardcore political questions. Number one, the Libertarian Party needs to petition to get on approximately 14 or 15 states, depending on um, whose site you believe about how many states you currently, the Libertarian Party has access to. Uh, this is not an environment where you can go and get petition signatures. Can you get on all 50 state ballots? This seems to be a, le a legitimate uh, I hurdle for you. Well, it is a challenge, and especially during this crisis, it's a challenge to go out and get the signatures and, and get on all the ballots. But there are uh, cases pending out there. There, are, there is pressure on state governments to make some changes. And the goal, of course, is to get on as many ballots as possible, up to 50. And I think that the Libertarian Party can either get on 50 ballots or get very close to getting on 50 ballots. And uh, we okay. intend to win this race. I mean, we're, it's not a race for fun, as I've said many times. So we'll continue to push and get right. on as many ballots as possible because we can win this. Uh, it's, since you want to be a winner, if you thought you were going to be a spoiler and you thought you could, you're not a fan of President Trump. We know you're not a fan of Joe Biden, but you were such not a fan of President Trump. You left the Republican Party, voted to impeach him. If you thought your presence made it easier for him to win a second term, but you couldn't win, what would you do? Well, once I've got the nomination, if I earn the nomination, I'm running for the White House. I'm, I'm going all the way. It's impossible to know how the addition of a candidate affects the race. And I think there's a lot of time being wasted by people on both sides of the aisle <laughs> trying to decide whether my candidacy hurts Donald Trump or Joe Biden. We just don't know the answer. And there are millions of Americans who aren't represented by either one and aren't represented well by either party. And they want an alternative. They want someone to vote for. And I think that's actually the plurality of Americans. So it's it's kind of silly to say, well, you might hurt one of the partisan candidates when I don't think they represent the majority of the country. I don't think they represent the largest group in the country. I'm sure you've already heard 17 different angles of how your candidacy helps in 17 different ways or hurts in 17 different ways. I can argue it from any side. I know exactly what you mean. Congressman Amash, uh, uh, good luck. Stay safe uh, out there and we'll be watching. Thanks, Chuck. Appreciate it. You got it. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel. So thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Beat the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. 
NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.